guys, Josh from SoccerReviewsForYou.com, bringing you my review plus on-feet video of the brand new Nike Free Train Force Flyknit. Now this is a brand new all-around training model from Nike, has a retail price of $150 US, and as it says right here on the insole, these are made to lift, run, jump, and cut. It says pun now instead of run because a little piece of the R wore off, but trust me, it did at one point say run. So like I said, this is kind of your all-in-one training shoe. You can do just about anything in it. I've been training in these every single day for the last week or so, and I've actually been very, very impressed with this new model from Nike. It has a very interesting fly knit upper with a very interesting cut. It implements the brand new Nike free training outsole, and it's just a really interesting combination of features in general. So in this video, I'm gonna be sharing my experience with the shoe. We're gonna talk tech specs, go over all the features, take a look at the weight, as well as talk about how these things fit and feel on feet. So if you're interested in learning more, stick around, watch the entire video if you're interested in a pair there is a buy it now link down below in the description go ahead and check that out and with that being said let's get right into the review so the nike free train force fly knit what are they all about let's talk tech specs so the upper really intrigued me with this particular shoe um, especially because this is a soccer channel so a lot of you guys watching this video uh, probably know what i'm talking about but nike recently unveiled the nike mercurial superfly 5 soccer cleat um, and this has an upper with a fly knit construction that has a similar pattern to that particular shoe. A lot of people excited about that. And if the upper on the Superfly 5 is anything like these, I'm excited because this upper is really, really good. And it's straight up fly knit. That's the thing that really with a lot of these models, until you actually have them in your hand, you just don't know what's going to be the case here. You have a full fly knit construction. There's no reinforcement on the inside. Uh, so basically all the structure is coming from a very densely knitted material. Um, you can see that you have this kind of stripe design. That's there one for looks and two for actual structure. There's a pretty significant difference in thickness with all these different stripes here. Some are thicker, some are a lot thinner. So you still maintain that kind of stretchiness that you would expect from kind of a more sock-like material like Flyknit. It's still very flexible, of course, but at the same time, it doesn't lack structure either. You get good lateral and uh, kind of side to side stability. Um, your foot is locked down very, very nicely in the shoe. And then as you get into the lacing system, the laces are attached directly with fly wire cables that run from the base of the sole through the actual fly knit and then connect the laces to the shoe. So um, like I said, it's a very direct connection between the main support system on the upper and the actual lacing system. So when you do pull the laces tight, your foot is locked in place really, really nicely. And despite the upper being very soft, very flexible and having no main structure to it when your foot's not in the shoe, once your foot's in there and you do pull the laces tight, it's a very, very, um, like I said, locked in responsive sensation that just feels really, really good. This does not feel flimsy on your feet whatsoever, which is kind of something that I was a little bit worried about. As far as the actual collar itself is concerned, it's not really a mid-cut shoe. It's not really a low-cut shoe. It's kind of right there in the middle. I guess a low-cut shoe would be right about here, and then this is just an extension piece. So um, I guess it's kind of similar to the mid-cut models uh, from Nike in, in the soccer range right now, the Superfly, the Obra, or the Phantom 2. Um, it doesn't come up quite as high, and it has this kind of cool slanted forward angle to it, which I don't mind. So it's a little bit higher at the back than it is at the front. And really the collar itself, you don't notice it at all when you're actually wearing the shoe. The only time you're actually gonna notice it is when you put them on and you just make sure this part is pulled up efficiently enough just so it's not kind of in the way or bunching up across the top of the foot because it is a one piece construction to the entire upper, which is also kind of a cool little feature. So um, if there's one aspect of this shoe that did bother me for the first couple wears and even still, I'm not crazy about this aspect of the shoe. It's the heel area. Basically, they implemented a hard plastic internal heel counter. So again, very similar to the soccer range. Uh, the Superfly and the Obra is really what these reminded me of. And you have this stiffer heel, which they say is there for, um, it helps you to maintain proper form when you're when performing a squat or something like that. Um, I did squat in these, didn't really feel like it was helping me in any way, but you do have the stiffer heel here, which, I guess it's supposed to have an impact on performance, but the biggest impact it had for me with my experience with this shoe is the actual comfort in the heel area. You definitely notice a very firm feel right here at the back. 
Um, it's something that takes some getting used to. Um, I would recommend just not kind of going all out the first time that you wear them or maybe even the first couple of times. Just wait for them to kind of break in a little bit for your feet to get used to the shoes themselves. Um, and after that, it wasn't an issue whatsoever. Um, and uh, like I said, once I got used to them and they were kind of broken in properly, uh, the shoe is extremely comfortable. And like I mentioned, fits extremely well. On the inside, it has a liner, but there's no real padding to it. It's just basically covering up that kind of plastic um, heel counter. So basically what it is is kind of like a synthetic suede material that grips your sock quite nicely so your heel's not sliding around on the inside of the shoe, um, which is a nice little feature. Um, as far as the insole is concerned, pretty straightforward insole, kind of what you would expect from Nike at this point. Uh, mesh liner on top and it's just an ortholite material, this blue foam. Uh, nice and soft, really well cushioned and again kind of a straightforward insole for any of the higher end Nike training and running models, I guess you could say at this point. You're gonna notice that the shape of the shoe is pretty distinct as far as trainers go. You see this with a lot of Nike models and that it's a little bit more narrow in the heel and then it gets a lot wider in the forefoot, mainly for stability reason. It even has kind of an outrigger here in terms of the actual sole extending a little bit further past the upper itself where your foot actually sits. And again, that's just there for stability reasons. As far as the midsole is concerned, it is a dual density midsole. So you can see that there's some volt yellow foam underneath here with all the cutouts that's going to be your softer foam and then the midsole is actually going to be a little bit firmer again for stability reasons given that this is a training model they don't really specify on the website as to what exact foams are being used here that's kind of the case with the whole nike free um, release all the new ones that they have just recently come out but it feels really good they're not overly cushioned it doesn't feel like particularly mushy or anything like that but it's not overly firm either um, not really a low profile sensation in all honesty given that it is a nike free model but as you would expect they are very very flexible so you have these splits along the side of the outsole and then you have this new tristar system that i have they have here where basically you have this kind of three-pointed shape um, where the cutouts are in the outsole that are fairly large. It's supposed to allow for better flexibility, more natural range of, range of motion when you're running and moving and stuff like that. That's kind of what the Nike Free line has always been about. But in all honesty, if you've worn Nike Freeze in the past, be it a runner or a trainer, these are honestly going to feel very similar in terms of overall flexibility. They won't feel more natural. They won't feel that much different. It just feels like a Nike Free if you kind of get what I'm saying. And then of course it is a training model. So you're going to find a more significant amount of rubber than what you'd find on a running model, just because they want you to have that grip. If you're going to be sprinting in these, which you can, if you're going to be making quick cuts and changes of direction, which you can. So you have three large pieces of rubber right here at the heel, and then a bunch of rubber scattered through the forefoot and toe box area. So as far as traction is concerned, these are sufficient in terms of pretty much anything that you want to do. I played basketball in these a couple of times, didn't have any issues. Obviously, if the court's really dusty, um, you may have some problems because all the red that you see here is just straight up foam. But like I said, there's a sufficient amount of rubber here um, and the shoes just perform really, really well in pretty much everything that I did. This is a really good kind of all around pair of trainers. I know this is a soccer channel, so some of you guys are going to ask, can I wear these to play soccer in? And I suppose you could, there's nothing wrong with it. The upper is going to provide a fairly decent touch given that it is just straight up flying it, but you don't have any kind of protective layer. It doesn't necessarily have the greatest heel area for soccer, I would say. Um, the outsole is a little bit thicker than you perhaps might want. You could play soccer in them. Would I buy these as straight up soccer shoes? No, it's really more of an all-purpose trainer. And if you happen to, uh, I guess, jump into a pickup soccer game or something like that, you can wear them and not have too many problems. But like I said, buying these as dedicated soccer shoes, probably not the best idea, but as a pair of trainers, Highly recommended. I really like almost every aspect of this particular shoe. In terms of weight, the Free Train Force Flyknit felt pretty light when I was wearing them, but for the sake of this video, I'm actually gonna weigh them for you today in real time. Keep in mind that this pair is a size 9.5 US. We're gonna throw them on the scale, and you can see that they weigh in at 8.7 ounces, the equivalent of 246 grams. So as far as trainers go, that is pretty light. Given how well these things fit, and once they're broken in, how natural they feel on your feet, they feel a lot lighter than 8.7 ounces, if I'm completely honest with you guys. But again, even at 8.7 ounces, that's pretty light for any pair of trainers or even running shoes for that matter. So again, if you're looking for some nice, lightweight, flexible, I guess sock-like trainers, this is probably one of, if not your very best option right now. As far as aesthetics go, I'm sure some people have mixed opinions on this particular shoe, just given it's fairly unique styling. 
I'm gonna be honest with you guys, when I first saw them, and even when I ordered them, I was a little bit skeptical of the overall looks, but once I actually saw the shoe in person, I have to say it's, it's really impressive. The fly knit, the detail, the precision in the actual material itself is really, really cool, and it just, it fits the theme of this shoe. It's a very interesting cut. It's a unique shape. It's a unique pattern with this kind of stripey design they have going on. You have the fade in the midsole, which is kind of unusual as well. And I, I like it. It's probably not a shoe you would want to buy and wear casually, but for training, I think they definitely look the part. Um, this is the bright crimson and black colorway. So you have this very bright red uh, and black on the upper. Um, I did swap in some black reflective SR4U laces for those that are wondering, just because I thought it looked a little bit cleaner than the bright red ones that were a little bit more pink than red in my opinion. You have some pink as well as some neon yellow or Volt yellow. Um, as far as accent colors, it feels like Nike has to incorporate Volt on all of their shoes. Um, and then of course, white Nike swooshes on either side. So visually, probably not the best casual wear shoe, but as a pair of trainers, I have to say I feel pretty cool when I'm wearing these. I, I just like how they look. Uh, they look better on feet than they do um, just in pictures, I guess is the best way to put it. So let me know what you guys think about how these look down below in the comments. Do you love them? Do you hate them? Why or why not? And with that being said, let's move on to the on feet portion of the video so we can get a better idea as to how these shoes fit and of course what the sizing is like. All right, so here is a look at the shoes on feet. On my left foot, you can see the stock laces that come with the shoes. And on my right foot, I have a pair of black reflective junior length SR4U replacement laces. If you're interested in a pair of replacement laces for yourself, the website to go to is www.sr4ulaces.com. Find a direct link to that website down below in the description of this video. Now, in terms of how these things fit and feel on feet, they are out of the box, pretty comfortable shoes. They fit extremely well. Like I mentioned though earlier in the video, the thing that I noticed initially at least is the heel. It does have kind of a firmer sensation against the back of your heel foot area. Not the most comfortable thing in the world, but you do get used to it after a couple hours of wear. Again, just take things easy for the first couple times you wear them, and you shouldn't have too many issues as far as the break-in process is concerned. If you wear them straight into a run or something like that, you potentially could get some issues with blistering, but like I said, as long as you take your time with them, you should avoid uh, any kind of discomfort or any kind of injury as far as blisters go. Um, but the rest of the shoe, like I said, fits extremely well. The flying it upper is structured when you pull the laces type at the same time maintains a really good level of flexibility um, but again you have that very kind of sock like sensation from the upper it wraps your foot really nicely and has a good snug overall fit the cut at the ankle uh, it looks cool again you don't really notice it when you're actually wearing the shoes um, it fits fairly snug as you guys can see at least on my ankles again depending on the thickness and the size of your ankle it, it may not fit quite as snug as it does on me but that's not really gonna impact performance at all. The collar is not going to create any extra lockdown or any kind of extra ankle support. It's really there as more of a visual thing, I would say. Um, and as far as the outsole is concerned, it does have, like I said, some decent underfoot cushioning. It has a firmer feel overall, obviously very flexible given that it is a Nike free outsole. And again, once you get used to them, they're pretty comfortable shoes to wear. As far as width is concerned, they have some decent width to them. I'm gonna say that these will be suitable for most people. Um, as far as stretching goes, it does have elasticate, the part of the upper is elasticated, so it kind of stretches immediately. So the way it fits from the get-go is pretty much how it's gonna fit. It's not gonna permanently stretch or anything like that. And as far as sizing is concerned, I went with my usual size nine and a half US, which is what I've worn in Nike free training models in the past. The training models, I stay true to size. The running models, I generally go up a half size. So I stuck with my usual size nine and a half and the fit is pretty snug, which is kind of how you want a trainer to fit. So for the most part, if you want a snug fit, I would personally recommend going true to size in order to have the proper fit lengthwise. All right, guys, that is it for my review of the Nike Free Train Force Flyknits. Again, if you are interested in a pair, there is a buy it now link down below in the description of this video. So go ahead and check that out. If you have any questions at all regarding this particular trainer, leave them down below in the comments and I definitely will get an answer out to you. If you enjoyed today's video, found it helpful and informative, be sure to support it with a like. Subscribe if you haven't already for daily videos on all the latest and greatest soccer games. Here. You can find all my social media information linked in the description as well. And other than that, guys, hope you enjoyed today's video. And as always, thanks for watching.